Hello and welcome. You are watching a technical training video in a series of videos about solar powered water system design presented by the West and Central Africa Regional Solar Hub. Let's get started. There are five basic steps to solar powered water system design. The first step is water demand. The second step is water source capacity and quality. The third step is system flow rate and total dynamic head. The fourth step is pump selection. And finally, the fifth step is designing the photovoltaic system. This video will focus on the first step, water demand. Determining safe water demand is the most important step of the solar powered water system design process. This is because it is necessary to properly size our system and because it is the measure by which we evaluate if our design process was successful or not. Let's consider an example project. Our community is made up of 500 households with an average household size of six people per household. The community population includes two schools with a total population of 400 and a religious institution with a population of 1,000. It is estimated that people will need about eight liters per person per day of safe water. First, we'll calculate the total service population by multiplying 500 households times six people per household to get 3,000 people. Next, we'll calculate the maximum demand at system commissioning. This is achieved by multiplying the service population by the full individual usage amount, and that totals 24,000 liters per day. We can also calculate the anticipated demand at system commissioning, considering a penetration rate, which is the percentage of people who will use the system. In this case, we'll assume 90% to get an anticipated demand of 21,600 liters per day. Lastly, we can also consider the future population. Considering a 3% growth rate over 20 years, we can estimate that there will be 5,418 people in 20 years, considering this exponential population growth function. And lastly, we can calculate the anticipated future demand, again, considering a 90% penetration rate, where 90% of the community will use the water. And for that, we get 39,012 liters per day. Next, let's look at how this information appears in the Solar Powered Water System Design Tool. All right, so here we are in step one of the Solar Powered Water System Design Tool, where we will be calculating daily water demand. As the first part, we're going to determine the household population. If the total population is reported, you can enter that number here. But you also may want to break it down by the number of households and the average household uh, size or persons per household. And those multiplied together give you the estimated household population, which is automatically calculated. You can see these fields in blue are ones that are for user input, whereas the fields not in blue are automatically calculated. If the entire household population is in the service area, you'd enter yes. But if not, you can enter no and then enter the number of people not in the service area that might also be served by the project. There may also be institutions. If there are institutions present, you can answer yes here and then list the different institutions and their population size. In this case, we have schools with a population of 400 and a religious institution with a population of 1,000. Then it asks the question, does the household population include these people? In this case, we answered yes. And so there's zero additional population to be served. But for example, if there was a clinic in which healthcare workers were coming to work from outside the community, or the people in the clinic themselves did not live in the community, you might answer no here and enter that population um, that would additionally be served by the project that don't live in the households of the community. So finally, we determine the population served. In this case, it's 3,000. Um, 
if these numbers were different for any reason, maybe if there were additional population from outside the community, then you might want to provide an explanation if the population to be served by the project is different than the sum of the household and additional populations. Now we'll proceed to step 1B below. This is where we'll look at individual water demand for the project. Uh, so we're estimating about eight liters per person per day. So when we multiply 3,000 people by eight liters per person per day, we get 24,000 liters per day. This is the maximum demand at system commissioning if everyone consumes eight liters per day per person for the project. But we know that not everyone will always use the water. So we can estimate the anticipated percent of the population to use the system. In this case, we enter 90%. And then we also know that we, they might not use the full usage amount. But in this case, we'll assume eight liters per person per day, but you could adjust that to be lower or uh, if needed. And then 3,000 times 90% times eight gives us 21,600 liters per day, which is the anticipated demand at system commissioning. Next, we can also look at the future demand. Considering 20 years into the future at a 3% growth rate, the new future population is automatically calculated as 5,418. Again, in the future, we could enter a percentage of people to use the system. In this case, we're assuming 90% and then eight liters per person per day. But again, that number could be potentially higher if in the future you expect people to consume more water per person. But then that new population in the future, 5,418 times 90% times eight, gives us a total anticipated future demand of 39,012 liters per day. Now we've calculated all three uh, different demands here and it's up to you to decide which is the appropriate one to use as the water demand. In this case, we're gonna choose our maximum demand at system commissioning, which was 24 meters cubed per day. So we enter that here and then just give an explanation as to why you choose that water demand. Then if there are other water uses, such as for irrigation or livestock or other means, you could enter that here. And then we also might want to consider daily water losses and estimate a percentage that might be lost due to leakage or spillage or other causes. And then that 5% is what we assume. And then that 5% added to the 24 meters cubed per day gives us a design demand of 25 meters cubed per day. And that's the end of the first step of determining safe water demand. Thank you for watching this quick technical training video about solar powered water system design presented by the West and Central Africa Regional Solar Hub. If you want to learn more or get assistance with the project you're working on, visit our website at wcarsolarhub.org. Thanks for watching.